Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we've got a great topic. And it's going to be, what are you, what do we see our clients doing that's really sucking their time? So we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got Landon A.I. Harris, the aquatic investor. Landon, how are you? Oh well, Mark. Good to see you. We're we're missing your your better half, your other half. She's slacking. We yeah we 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 we're missing that female energy, but we've got Kirk, Hertz, Kirk. We still need to come up with a nickname for you. Yeah, I'm doing good, Mark, and still scared about what the nickname's going to be. It's just going to come organically. <laughs> it you know it could be Kirk. No fair. No fear. <laughs> the kind of fear peer that kind of rhymes uh, kind of except i'm uh, always terrified but that's okay i keep going that, yeah that's <laughs> that's where the nickname comes in it's like you know when you call you know big guy tiny <laughs> right eric the technician peterson hey mark how are you? good to see you good to see you and last but not least i love it when you call me big papa tate litchfield tate howard things Life is good. Can't complain. Well, let's let's pick on Kirk No Fear Parrot here uh, with our topic. So, Kirk, when you're looking at clients in the coaching program or office hours, where do you see them spending a majority of their time where they, they shouldn't be spending it? Like, you know, we're, we're talking about spring cleaning. Like, where should they spend their time spring cleaning? And, uh, and not not spending time doing X, but they should be spending time doing Y. Yeah, uh, I think that's an awesome question. And you know, um, I think what I see some folks doing is they fall into the easy trap, right? They fall into that trap of like, well, this is easy, and you know, I kind of enjoy doing this, so I'm just going to keep doing this forever. Uh, and because they like doing it, at least like doing it in the moment, they just keep doing it, even though it's a task that really is a low value task, a low kind of dollar task. Um, so, you know, an easy one is the first one is uploading the list, right? Just, just the fact that county research, if you like, it can be a lot of fun, right? Then that means that that can bleed over into creating the list, which can, if you like the county research can be fun and pricing the list and uploading the list. Well, that's like, a good amount of work on the intake side that really once you train somebody to do that and you have them doing it for you, it frees up your mind to do other interesting, more interesting things. So oftentimes getting trapped in that kind of easy, fun work, but it's a, it, it feels good now, but it's a blocker to getting to more interesting and really more higher value add things later. No, a hundred percent. And you know, if, if you're doing five dollar an hour work, you're making no money doing it. So you gotta, right. you know, move up that that value chain, even if you like doing it. And this is something we could even talk about later because I I always have this sort of dilemma. It's like, well, if it really brings you joy, I don't want to suck the joy out of the business for you. That being said, you should really, you know examine how you are spending that time even if you even if you enjoy it but yeah. maybe uh landon ai harris sees something else where people are spending their time on things that they really shouldn't be spending their time on what are you seeing yeah you know as i talk to people uh that are doing this business or even just getting started like i i hear a lot of people researching so much of this business about trying to do other people's systems. Like they want just mm. to jump right into somebody else's system. And cause you're making it work. They want to jump right into yours and it may not be the system that you need to do. And especially in the beginning, like I tell people all the time, the nuts and bolts of this business is so simple. It is not overly complicated. You don't have to have every system in the world to make this business work. I think, People get so wrapped up into kind of what they see and 
they assume, okay, well, I need this to make my business. No, really what you need to do is go buy land, go market it and go sell it. It's that simple. It's that simple. And I think people really dive in too much to starting the business and really just wanting to put everything in when that kind of stuff kind of you evolve into that. Every business evolves and grows if you want to be a successful business. And I think, you know, when we start off, I think the biggest thing is just get the A's, A's, A's and C's, if I can get it out. Um, just keep it simple. Keep it simple and do the things that, you know, what we teach and just kind of keep it moving. Don't try to go too far. Just And then as your business grows, then you can kind of start jumping into some other things. Yeah, I I really like that answer for a number of reasons, but it's like the, the follow the recipe, right? We give you this recipe in, in flight school, but what you, you know, but people want to make it complicated. It's like, well, okay, well, if I'm following the recipe and I would just use this, the restaurant analogy. Well, what, what kind of pans does Eric Peterson use? And, and what kind of spatula does, does Kirk use? And uh, what is, is he using an electric grill? Or a gas grill, and uh, you know, it, it's irrelevant. I mean, the the tools that we're using uh, are are irrelevant. I mean, yeah, Eric's like, it's a, I'm using a smoker, so <laughs> you know, it, you you're gonna use the tool that's best for you at that time in your business because you're not Tate or Eric or Kirk or Landon. You're not there yet. You're still new. You want to get the fundamentals down, you want to follow the recipe, then become the chef, then put your own spin on it. But to come in to say Eric's kitchen and say, oh yeah, I'm going to use, you know, exactly his processes, his systems, his tools, but he's built his business to a place you're not even there yet. And he has a team that's not the I mean, you're just taking one variable and thinking, oh, okay, that that's going to get me to be those exact results. It's not, it's, it's a process. It's an evolution. And we do see that a lot where people just want to skip this, the, the step of, yeah. of the, of, of keeping it simple and, and then building from there. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like that answer. Uh, Eric, the technician, Peterson, Mr. Smoker. So, I don't, I don't know what he uses a gas grill. Don't you put that on him, Mark? No, yeah, <laughs> it does matter. Charcoal does and matter. wood over Charcoal here. Charcoal and wood. Oh, um, natural. I think that what comes to mind when we're we're talking about this topic is you know what we would commonly refer to as shiny object syndrome, right? And I think specifically that is within the business. So I see students so often get caught up in the weeds of whether it's evaluating softwares or trying to learn how to use a certain software or tool when in the end, like, yes, that might be a piece of their business, but it's not going to sell them land today. It's not going to help them acquire land today. Right. And they're in there, you know, spending time watching YouTube videos, this versus this, or, you know, how do I do this? technical aspect of, I don't know, setting up an air table base or could be anything, right? But if, if it's going to distract you from the day-to-day -day activities of mailing and marketing, then it's wasting your time at this point in the business when you're launching this business and trying to build it into something that's substantial. Um, so how do we solve that? Quite simply, we go to a place like Upwork or Fiverr or one of those other resources where we can find people that are experts in these various things that we might need um, and put them to work on those tasks. Don't spend your time trying to learn something that you're not familiar with when you should be doing the, the ABCs of the business as, as Landon referred to it. No, 100%. You, you want to focus on those money making activities and not distract yourself. Or I, I think it's, it's a form of procrastination actually is to go and, and, and avoid the pain of the real work of the mailing and marketing, and then find some shiny object that feels like work. 
but it's not really productive work. Uh, I've heard some productivity experts call it uh, polishing the runway, right? Well, it's easy to polish the runway, but what's what takes a lot of effort is getting off, it's getting the plane off the runway and, and flying and that, and that energy that it takes there. I mean, I think of just email. You know, how many times a day are you just checking email? That's just a complete distraction to, to total procrastination from what you really should be doing to to build your business and and move the needle in your business. So I think that's a that's a and that's an interesting and a great answer uh, and a great observation from the technician. Thank you. Well, to 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 close us off, Big Papa Tay Litchfield, what are you seeing your clients do that they shouldn't be doing? You know. <sighs> really love what everybody said thus far. I kind of like, I was summarizing it in my mind as I was <clears throat> preparing for my comment and, you know, what Eric said and kind of goes with what, uh, you know, Landon and Kirk said, it's like, you don't have to be an expert at anything except hiring an expert, right? Like that's, that's kind of what they're saying is learn to hire experts and, and that'll get you far, especially in the land business. What I see people wasting time on is chasing sales that have no chance of progressing. And what I mean by that is you're talking with that guy on the phone and he's really, really interested and he'll say something like, well, I can't afford the property payment today. It'll have to be on February 31st of next year. And you're like, huh? Okay. Uh, and then you keep talking with that individual and you're like, what is going on here? February 31st, you don't have 250 down and a hundred bucks for the, uh, for the doc fee or 250 for the doc fee and a hundred dollars down. Like, why am I still on the phone with you? And the, the, the other aspect of this is the guy who calls you up and says, Hey, I really like your property. It's not what I want. I'm looking for something in the mountains with big trees, a stream running through it, wildlife going through it on a daily basis where I can park my camper and live out there forever. Um, and I want to pay $200 a month. Like that, that's a dead end, or that's a dead end. And so what, what some new land investors would do is they'll go to the communities or they'll spend hours researching it and trying to find this property. It's like that exists. That property does exist but that guy can't afford it. And so you're wasting your valuable time, which is not free, chasing leads or working leads that have no chance of progressing. So my uh, biggest pet peeve is working with people who have no intention of buying. And if you can become an expert in sniffing that out and telling or not whether somebody is, um, you know, going to actually progress, then I think you're able to manage what's going on in the business that much easier. Yeah. And one of those easy positions to hire for is that sales assistant to qualify the leads. So you're not spending that time, that valuable time with tire kickers, with people that want something that they can't afford, or they're like really excited about the property, but they're, yeah, can we, can we do it in, in, in three months when I have the money? Like, wait, these properties are priced to sell today. And that's a really not a good sign, right? That's a red flag. If if they, to your point, they can't handle two fifty down, two fifty a month. So, uh, yeah, that that's that's a, a really great answer. And uh, you know, it, it kind of reminds me like what I would see is people doing the same type of thing on intake, talking to sellers, and listening, you know, to a thirty minute story about how they bought the property, why they bought the property, why they're selling the property. Again, it's an important role. It's just you as the owner, you as a CEO, it's not the best use of your time. And there's someone out there who can do that at a much lower rate. So you can spend your time doing the 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 tasks that really move the needle and grow the business and actually make you lots and lots of passive income. So I thought it was a, it was a, a great subject um, for sure. But now we're at that point in the podcast where we're going to put Landon on the spot and ask him for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, 
improve their lives. And Eric is like, wait, why is it not Kirk? And I don't exactly. know. I'm like, I, I thought we passed the baton by now. I, I think guess. we should pass the baton. Landon, <laughs> you want to pass the baton to Kirk. I was going to give it to you. You know what? I'm going to cover you this one. But you got it in the next one. I guarantee it. Landon, Landon, you're such a good guy, man. So now, so now Kirk is prepared. He will be taking on tips of the week going forward. I mean, I know how the I know how the podcast works. I could get called at any time. So I come ready. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, since since this will be my final tip, <laughs> no. Um, so we were talking about productivity and like what's what's a good way of not wasting time and kind of moving your business forward. Um, so one of the things that I would you know suggest everybody do is this is a classic book. Um, it's worth a reread. It's called Strength Finder 2.0 by Tim Roth. I think most of us have gone through it or read it, but it's worth a reread. Um, that great way to find strengths uh, that you possess and your VAs. Um, great way to, you know, put, uh, look at you, man. You got it all right. <laughs> Was that your tip? I didn't realize I came prepared for your tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for those of you listening, uh, Kirk is showing he's got the book right on his desk. And my wife actually gave me this book. And she gave me a Strength Finders evaluation from one of her friends who who does it. This was like a early dating gift she knows me very well awesome book. yeah she, she was looking for the red flags yeah yeah totally for sure <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you got to go get it everybody's got to get that book um it's definitely worth you know applying to your business for sure awesome awesome well just a reminder to the audience the only way that we're going to get landon to pass the baton off to kirk and get more tips of the week. If you do three favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. And if you're interested in building your passive income without renters, without rehabs, without renovations, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn more, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training and schedule a call with our team and see if the land investing is right for you. Hey, are we good? Yes, sir. That was good. Landon, are we good? We are good, Mark. Eric? We're great. Mr. Tip of the Week, Kirk? <laughs> awesome. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Kirk just did the thumbs up and we got fireworks. <laughs> I still haven't Fantastic. figured out how to turn that off, actually. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, let's do this. One, two, three. Let's let, let freedom, 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 freedom. Not bad. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go figure out what to do with this cold. I don't know. What, what, by the way, I don't. What is it? Starve a fever, feed a fever, starve a cold. What's Stop. what's what, what's the, is is any of this even relevant anymore? Hey, your dad's a doctor. Did you hear I this don't growing know what up? That, that sounds. I have no idea what that is. I've never heard that expression. You guys never heard this expression? I mean, no. Eric? I, I have heard it. I don't You've heard the expression. I don't know what it is. Like, what order? <laughs> if only there was a way to find out. Hmm. To go to the order. Well, that's <laughs> complicated. It's too complicated. You probably need to go um, ask a doctor or something. Yeah, yeah. You can ask that. WebMD's AI. I was going to yeah. say, yeah, you be careful <laughs> right. with that one. No, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for like health tips, does anyone ever go online anymore? It's just so scary. No, I can't even do it. No, it's like it's like no, the it's... one thing I, I try not to uh, to research. And by the way, I'm not even googling anymore. I'm using perplexity, and it just gives you the answer. So maybe yeah. I use perplexity. <laughs> All right. I find that when I go online to look for cures for whatever ailed me, I leave with more ailments that I have to go Google. <laughs> yeah, Always. yeah, no kidding. I, I, have, I have more anxiety. Yeah, that I had in the beginning. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.